Hello there and welcome back to the Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project. And this time it's a long-awaited or long semi-promised dress. I made this catalog in catalogs video where I went through this catalog from 1948, Montgomery Ward's catalog from 1948, and said I might want to make this dress on the channel and then I never did it. And I never even scanned this catalog and put, the, put it on Pinterest for you because I didn't have my large format scanner at the time, but now I do. So I did go ahead and scan the fashion pages from this catalog for you all, and those are available on Pinterest. I'll put the link to that in the description below. But today I'll be replicating this dress from 1948 to the best of my ability over on the blue patterning table of doom. So let's jump on over there and get started. Now, according to Montgomery Wards, this dress has a side zipper in it, but we could make this an actual wrap dress. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, I uh, don't even know if there's fully underlaps, but I assume that it does. Anyway, I'm making mine a wrap dress in a kind of a weird way, so you'll see what I end up doing for that. But for a wrap, I'm going to need a full front because I have to have these two sides that are kind of asymmetric that layer underneath one another. So I will trace my uh, bodice block pattern uh, mirrored along the center front seam here. And I'm going to decide where I want that wrap to end on the side. I'm not going to go fully to the side seam because it doesn't seem that there's does here. So I'm going to draw this wrap in. This needs to go, this line needs to go through um, the apex on this side so we can close these darts and get rid of them into the wrap like so i chose this lower line but i should have chosen the upper one because i end up adding a bit back on you'll see what i mean when i cut this side of the pattern off because we are not going to be needing it goodbye and i'll cut this out in general so that we can start moving these darts around and manipulating them where we want them to be because there are not darts on this bodice there are some tucks though i just raised my shoulder line a tiny bit there about a quarter of an inch um, kind of tapering that from the neckline to the shoulder and over here I can go ahead and close this dart and then we'll smooth this off again but I like to overlap this a little bit extra at the top there that helps again remove the gape from a wrap top like this let me just draw a line and actually straighten this off but yes I raised the shoulder a tiny bit I tipped it up there I kind of wish I had raised it a little bit more and actually brought the shoulder out about a quarter of an inch as well because this really does have quite a shoulder pad in there and I didn't add them this time but I probably should have to better replicate this dress but I just taped on a little bit more because I didn't like how narrow I originally made this little wrap end here. And then I went ahead and trimmed off my extra uh, like underlap of where I closed that dart and taped down my floops in the back. And for some reason, I still hadn't cut this straight on the line. There we go. Nice. So we've closed that dart on one side. We still have these two darts on this side. They need to move. I'm going to move a tiny bit of fullness here into the waist because it looks like there might be a tuck down here on this bodice. I can't really tell, but maybe. So we'll put one down there. And then we're going to have three tucks up here into the shoulder. I kind of wish I moved these a little bit closer to the neckline in hindsight, but you know, that's how hindsight works, basically. Past me doesn't know. <laughs> I'm going to close the waist dart on this side now, like so. And that opens that up into these two lines I've opened. So we're moving this dart fullness around. I'm going to keep a little bit down here. Let me cut off the extra. I'm going to keep a little bit down here at the waist, um, not a ton. And then the rest will end up with the side dart as well in those tucks of the shoulder. So let me just fill this in here, keeping about an inch and a quarter of fullness down here in this little tuck into the waist. Again, I can't really tell. Uh, there's no line drawing for this design, so I can't really tell if they have a tuck down here, if it's just the way the fabric is folding in this particular photo. But I decided to add one in. And then I'm going to have this in three tucks up here, so let me separate these lines as well. You can always split your dart fullness into multiple darts if you would like to. Um, or put it all in one if you would like to. Let me close my side dart here as well. So we have the correct amount of dart fullness all up here in my shoulder. Which is a lot of dart fullness because it's me. That's alright. I'll go ahead and fill this in. Tape everything down as well up here. And then I can fold each of these um, tucks shut. Because I'll be using this as pleats um, on the outside of the bodice. And actually I'm going to line this and I'll use it as... Uh, sewn tucks on the inside and just as pleats on the outside but I need to pleat the paper close exactly how I want to pleat the fabric so I'm doing that here pleating the section closed how I will eventually pleat down the fabric itself so I can have the correct shape up here and also just get an idea of how this is going to go together like so so now this is our left and our right of the bodice front here no problem and I'll use the same exact pattern for the top and the lining I'll just sew the tucks um, like further, almost like darts in the lining. You could sew them as darts for the lining as well if you wanted to, um, and leave the top layer free. But I just sewed them as tucks because I felt like it. That's right. So this will be tucked like so. These will be closed, which creates again the cone of the bust that we always need here 
on the top of the garment. All right, Montgomery Ward, it's 1948. Front, that's right, like so. Set that aside for now. Now for the back of this, I just need my regular bodice block back, but I'm going to um, trace this with seam allowance, even though I don't need seam allowance because again, I'm going to be doing this as a wrap garment and therefore I do not need to cut the back with any seam allowance back here. I can cut this on the fold, um, but I will just keep my dart in the back here. I'm going to sew it again as a tuck for both the lining and the outside. Um, so a lot of that fullness will be free. I'm just going to sew like the first two and a half inches of the dart. You'll see what I mean later on. But here I am cutting this out with seam allowance, even though I don't need it. You'll see me fold it away later. And I did tip up the shoulder of that a little bit, just like I had done on the front. So they would still match up at the shoulder line. <laughs> I could talk. I will need my pencil skirt pattern for this. This is a three layer skirt here in the front. So uh, the first layer will be the regular pencil skirt and the back is going to be the regular pencil skirt that again, we'll cut on the fold. But here on the front, I'm going to have these two different levels of swags. I'm going to do the short little curved one first here. So I've got a full front of my pencil skirt here again. I've just um, traced that and I'm just going to try and decide how deep I want these tiers to be. And this first tier here, I'm going to make end just outside the dart here where the wrap of my dress had ended. Um, so I'm kind of drawing in the swoop of that. And then I will close the darts um, to make this basically a tiny little A-line skirt, which means that this will just float away from the rest of the body of the skirt a little bit, which gives it a little bit more volume and makes it a tiny bit ruffly, not a ton. You could, of course, extend this further and add more ruffle if you wanted to, make this more like a circle cut sort of thing. But here's my first layer of my tier ruffle situation, I suppose. These aren't really short enough to be ruffles in my world. It's just a tiered skirt. But yes, I'm going to close these darts over here, which again opens up the same amount, uh, mathematically, <laughs> the same angle into the hem of this. And I'll fill that in with paper. And then on this side, I'm going to open up this into like a swag drapey thing. I showed this in my batik dress here on the channel, or maybe it was in the tropical skirt and top set that I made, whichever it was, I will link that here. And you can see how to do these swags. I've done them a couple of times here on the channel. Um, but this is a, you know, fun skirt style here to make it a little bit sarong-ish to have your pleats go from the side up into the waist. And we'll fill this in with more paper and then I have to draw like the funny little uh, extension to this to make it pleat because it's hard to pleat down the paper when it comes to this weird curved shape. Um, most like tucks and stuff, fine enough, but this I have to extend it from the waist, connect from the waist point to where it was cut off and like square up from each of those to create the little correct shape up here. Again, I do a better job of explaining this in my other video. So click over to that if you want this to make any sense. Honestly, I wasn't going as slow on this day when I was drafting this pattern here. But again, taping down my floops so things don't get stuck on everything else. There we go. And this will be my top layer of our tiers of skirt going on here. And then I will need another one underneath this. But again, it looks like it comes away from the bottom skirt a little bit. The you know main part of the pencil skirt underneath all this seems to be the closest like straight skirt. And then the rest of this does flare a tiny bit. So once again, I need to mark where my front ends on my skirt and I will be ignoring the darts on this side for the most part. Um, and then using again, the other ones to make a flare. I um, decided needed it needed. Da, 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 da. I cannot speak. I needed to decide how long to make this as well, um, because it's a little bit closer to the hem than the other one, of course. Um, so I'm grabbing this to see how long this was because I need this ruffly bit on the side to end before that other one or near the other one. You know what I mean? Ugh, it's hard to describe. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Once again, sometimes in the creative flow of things, it's hard to describe what the heck I'm doing. Um, cause in the moment I hardly know what I'm doing, but yes, yeah, so I'll just draw in the curve for this. This is going to be a little bit of a different shape just because the edge of this that meets the wrap has a bit extra going on. And I am just going to gather this down to meet the first tier, um, eventually or like randomly pleat it down. You could do either. Um, but this hem here kind of needs to be an interesting shape. So, uh, the one side is a bit straight across so that it falls into that, I don't know, fall like waterfall effect there. And then the rest of this can be that curved hem, just like the top tier, top tier, <laughs> cut out the rest of this. And then I can, again, draw my lines down from my darts. This I'm thinking, I'm just going to pleat this down, right? Yeah. We'll just pleat that down. Not in any official sort of way, just to make it match. All right, let's go ahead and flare this area as well. So drawing down from my darts into the hem parallel from the dart points, and then I'm going to close my darts, open them all up into the 
hem of this to give myself a little bit of, again, flare. Like so. And I want this to be a straight edge on this uh, side so that it can again hang free and I can hem it. But I'm adding a little bit of extra flare near that end and then filling in all these triangles, smoothing them off. Lots of tape, you know. Tape down my floops. I don't like your pattern piece uh, when it has lots of jagged edges in the back. It'll get caught on stuff and then you'll end up ripping it and then you'll be sad. So that's why I do that. Some may think it's a waste of tape, but you know, I go through a lot of paper and tape down here anyhow. And uh, I'll tape these triangles on the other side closed as well and open this up again into the A-line, basically. I could have started with my A-line skirt, by the way. Perfectly acceptable idea. But I just wanted to keep that pencil skirt shape in mind the whole time because that is what the base layer of this skirt in the front will be. And I have a little bit of a gap here. Just fill this in. The tiny scrap of paper here. There we go. And I do refine this curve one last time once I see it in comparison to the top layer. There we go. Middle. It's the skirt front middle layer. And this will, you know, lay like a bit of a ruffle. I was looking at this and the shape is just a little different, so I wanted to refine that so it matched the first tier a little bit more. And I think that should work well for our tiered skirt today. The way that this wraps is kind of interesting because it's not, I didn't cut two fronts, full fronts for the skirt. I just cut one and I'll show you how that goes together later and trying to explain it at least. Um, but let me trace the top like five inches of my uh, sleeve pattern here. I'm only gonna make this two and a half inches long here at the underarm. And then I'm actually gonna tip up from the center here. So along the center line of the skirt, I'm gonna tip up to that so that our Sleeves come out at an angle. I needed to add uh, about a wedge of fullness along the center of this as well. If I had split open the sleeve along the center and added in another like um, triangle with the point up at the sleeve cap and the bigger end of the triangle at the hem, that would have looked more like this sleeve in this Ward's catalog image. I kind of forgot to flare this sleeve. I'm not used to doing short little sleeves like this, so I completely neglected to do that, which is a shame. So once again, I would have really liked to have in hindsight, um, extended and made the shoulder a little bit bulkier and a little bit more 40s that way, and then also flare these sleeves a little bit. Eh, you know. And here I am realizing I need this back to cut on the fold, so I can go ahead and fold that center back and label that cut on fold. At this point, you're thinking, has she had any coffee today? And the answer is yes, but it doesn't seem to be working. All right, so let me go ahead and pin my underarm seams for my sleeves. I did cut out uh, four of these total, so two lefts, two rights, um, so that I could fully line these or self-line them in this really pretty floral rayon crepe that I had in my stash. This is a rayon crepe from a seller on Etsy called Stevie Saint Fabrics. I can link them below. They often have nice floral rayon crepes. They don't have like a ton, like a huge selection, but they'll pop, with, pop up with a new one every once in a while. And this one was one that I snatched a couple of years ago. It's been in my stash and now it's finally getting put to use and into a 1940s dress. But I have my skirts here cut out. Again, I have the front and back standard skirt patterns that I cut out as well as the tiered front pieces. So I have to do the darts for the back of my skirt and then the darts for my front of my skirt. So I'm just gonna transfer those onto the back here. But you can get a better look at this print here. I think it looks kind of Art Nouveau almost. Um, it feels quite late 40s to me, even though the colors are a bit more late 80s, early 90s maybe with this kind of soft orange, yellow, and then like teal and like a pinkish, like a bluish toned pink. Eh. I don't know. I still think it'll pass for the 40s quite well. And truly, I think the 80s were the last time people were making nice round crepes for me because they're very hard to find anymore. Every once in a while, a fabric company will do a round crepe and I'll be very thankful, but it is a rarer thing to find. Once again, just like I want jewel tone cotton sateens, I also want a nice dress weight crepe like this in solid jewel tones. <sighs> if I ever become a multi-gajillionaire randomly out of nowhere, if they find oil in my backyard or something <clears throat> after I buy a house, first step there, um, I will come out with a line of uh, like some how sustainable, like, I don't know, bamboo rayon-ish crepe <laughs> that is in jewel tone and we'll only make enough that we all want so we won't have extra. And I'll just do like a different jewel tone every year and we can place pre-orders or something. <laughs> It'll be a very strange company that will definitely not be focused on profit, but that's all right. But again, I'm transferring my darts in colored pencil as I want to do and I will go ahead and pin those, set that next to the machine. I will um, be finishing the raw edges on this skirt with round seam binding later, hug snug round seam binding, as opposed to serging these. 
just because this dress was going to be otherwise fully lined and in a nice crepe sometimes I go the extra step and do hug snug instead of serging. And that was just the case today. Now I had just enough fabric to self line the top of this, um, you know, lining the sleeves, lining the bodice with the same crepe, but I did have to cut the back for the uh, lining on the cross grain. So I need to sew that together because I wasn't able to fit it onto the fold. Wow, I'm having such a hard time speaking today. I apologize. Uh, to be fair, this is the first time I'm speaking to anyone today other than my cats because my family are out of town. And therefore I have spoken to no one but you today. You and my cats are the only interaction I will have, and you're not really here right now. I'm speaking to you from the past. But I'm actually just going along here on the front pattern and going about halfway down the dart, or about three inches down the dart leg and poking a hole in there because I don't want to sew these to the dart point. I just want to sew these as tucks. So the first like three inches of the darts I will sew. Uh, in the back, I'm going to do the same actually in the end. For all these darts that we left in here, I'm using them as tucks for the lining and just pleating them for the outside. So this is the lining here. I'm going to sew these in this tuck. So I'm not sewing the full dart. I'm just sewing the first three inches of the dart. I am just going to sew that the same way I would sew a dart, honestly. I'm going to backstitch at the start, sew down the angled line, and then I'll just backstitch again to stop. Um, so similar to how I do darts. A little different, but you could sew the full darts in these. It is kind of hard to get a dart perfectly in the right spot in a floopier fabric like this. So honestly, doing tucks is probably a little more accurate. It leaves things a little bit freer around the cone of the bust, of course, but that's not so bad in a drapey dress like this one. And I am going to do the tucks on the outside of the back here this time. So tucks for the lining of the back and the outside of the back, and then pleats on the outside of the proper fabric for the front, tucks on the inside. Oh my goodness, am I making any sense today? I might need a vacation. I booked one actually yesterday. I booked a big, giant, epic vacation. Well, it's all going to be in one place, but it's going to be my favorite place. But I didn't book that vacation for um, anytime soon. It's going to be in next April. So I have a long time to plan. <laughs> but hopefully I'll find a rest day between now and then. But yes, many tucks to pin here. I'm kind of finger pressing this a little bit as I set them next to the machine. So my tucks are ready to go. And then this is the outside layer. So again, I'm just going to pleat this side. I'm taking my pattern and putting it on the top of my fabric, the like outside layer. And you see me like zhuzhing this around and moving it around until the crepe matches up with the pattern piece again. That's because again, crepe is very floopy. So sometimes you'll see me like tap the fabric a little bit or like kind of swish it around until it goes back into shape. Um, that's just one way I deal with floopier fabrics. Let's try and be patient with them and give them a little, a little tap until they behave. And I'll just go ahead and pleat this shoulder. And then I will baste over these pleats just so they stay in place until I actually sew this to the back. There we go. I ran out of pins. I do get some more. Luckily I have an extra box of pins in here. But these pins are actually so sharp, but in a weird kind of way that I need to, before I can start using them on fabric, I find that they catch on fabric until I like poke them into my tailor's ham first. So I kind of prep these pins each individual pin by poking it into either a uh, pin tomato or into my tailor's ham to kind of prep the point of them because I find otherwise they, they have like a little burr on the end or something. Something sticks to my fabric if I don't prep these pins. I guess not every box is like that, but the box I have currently, this is the case. But after that, they work fine. I'm just sewing the center back seam for my back bodice lining here. Basically just sewing all the things I just prepped and pinned over there. Um, so we can go ahead and baste this area, those pleats on the shoulder for the front outer layer. It's annoying that my outer layer and my inner layer are both printed and you cannot tell the front and backs of this fabric. So really, who knows what you're looking at unless I tell you and I'm doing a terrible job telling you. So great. But here my front is pleated and I'm just going ahead and basting over that, including this little tuck at the waist for those fronts, the outer fronts. And then for the inner fronts, I'll be using these tucks. So start at the large end of the dart, sew down about three inches, and then just backstitch and stop before I go to the point of the dart. I didn't even mark the point of the dart because I don't need it. Just lots of tucks, again, for the shoulder and for the waistline and then for the backs. And I'll just tie off the end of my darts on my skirt here. I've switched over to darts because I'm actually doing the skirt now. So tucks on the bodice, darts on the skirt, pleats on some of the bodice, Honestly, 
You could always, whenever you have darts, by the way, use them as just pleading at the top and leave the rest of the dart free for like a more flowy or gathered almost kind of look. You could also use it as gathering, <laughs> which I've done before here as well. Um, you could use it as tucks, pleats, gathering, or as a dart itself. So things to remember when it comes to darts. Once again, see my darts video if you would like a better explanation of all of this. But sewing my darts in my skirt, many a dart to sew, I'll get back to you. Now for the tiered skirt pieces, the outer ruffle layers, I need to do this one pleat up here on this top layer. So I'll just pleat that underneath my head so we cannot see. Great. Love it. Super useful. Very good. <clears throat> yeah, so, so I'll pleat that one thing down. Um, now the rest of this, I'm going to have to hem this free edge here and this little pleat was going to get in the way. So I actually just pleated it back again because it's not going to make a difference just to keep it out of the way. But this curved edge I need to hem. I'm going to turn that twice. Uh, quarter inch twice and hem that area by hand and then I'm going to need to hem this hem as well first before I can do anything else with these tiered layers then I'll set those aside for now and start pressing all my darts on my skirts fronts and back open here pressing this fabric in general this fabric creases rather easily which is annoying but it also irons very well so you know you can't have everything I do think it's quite pretty especially for spring and summertime I'm going to press my tucks here on the bodice back lining towards the center back. Set that aside. Grab my fronts here. And yeah, this is this current piece I'm looking at or that we're looking at is a front outer layer. So it's got pleats, not tucks. So I'm just giving it a little bit of steam to try and smooth those areas. And I'll set this aside here after I'm done. Same with this one. This is the other outer layer front. So I'm just giving it a tiny bit of steam at the very edge of where those pleats are. And I'll set that stuff aside. And I can press the lining. So this one has the tucks instead. If you're looking very closely, <laughs> you can kind of tell what I mean. So this has tucks. I'll press that towards the center. And these buddies press towards the shoulder because that's how I pleated the paper. And I pleated the paper that way because that seemed to be how the dress was arranged in the warts catalog. I'm actually just going to cut away the extra bit of tuck that interferes with the shoulder seam, seam allowance up here. Um, it's going to be, this is the lining and to a fully lined garment, so it'll be right sides facing out. So that'll be fully encased inside the lining and I'm not worried about it fraying at all. So this is a dress that will be dry clean only anyway. So it's not like it's gonna get stuck in a tumble dryer anytime soon and have lots of opportunity for fraying around. That is the problem with some rayons is that they are supposed to be dry clean only. I get a lot of people who tell me that I should starch my floopy fabrics. And I always find that very confusing because uh, I believe you have to wash starch out and most of the time, the floopy fabrics I'm working with are either rayon or silk, which are both dry clean only. So for those of you who have figured out how to hand wash rayon and uh, silk, give me all of your tips below, because I'd love to know how to do that without shrinking and ruining everything. But I just don't trust myself. I have a different idea in mind, actually, which is to buy some of those new, like, modern space age uh, sweat wicking, very slim t-shirt undershirts to wear underneath all these things. That way I don't have to wash the dress all the time and I can just wash those t-shirts, like undershirts. So I ordered actually a couple from Uniqlo and I'll let you know if they work because not having to do dry cleaning would be great and I would wear these things more often. Anyway, I've pinned my shoulder seams and side seams together for the front and the back here. Since all my front pleats and my back tucks are sewn, I can go ahead and sew these together at the shoulder and at the side seam. And they're all, I'm not worried about my pleats in any way because everything is basted, so should behave. But I think this will be nice with, you know, any of these colors as an accent color. Although I don't have any of these colors in a shoe. I just have the black and the white. I don't have a pink shoe, an orange shoe, or a teal shoe, or even a yellow shoe. So, you know, things to look forward to in the future. If someone ever makes a really cute buttery yellow shoe, I suppose. Though, as we know, I need to um, probably pare down my shoe collection, if anything. But again, I will sew the other side here. And then here's my sleeves from earlier. I had sewn those underarm seams. So I'll just line these buddies up with their respective uh, like other layer, put those right sides together, and I will sew the hems together to line these. So I'm gonna line up those underarm seams. This is, you know, uh, one set of sleeve and the other is the other set. So making sure that you're getting your rights and lefts in order. <laughs> it's kind of hard, especially again in this fabric where the right side and the wrong side are quite similar which is just not useful. And I mean, if you, I was lining this with a plain fabric, we'd be able to keep everything a little bit more <laughs> organized. But this way I have to be extra conscious of what I'm doing 
which is not really my strong suit, so it's a miracle that this came together at all anyway, but that's right. I will go ahead and hem those, technically, by bag lining them, I guess, over here on the machine, and then I can turn them right side out, and I don't remember if I understitched them. I should have if I didn't. How's that? There you go. I think I just turned them right, right side out and pressed it. It's pretty crisp again, this whole depressed edge very well, so I'm not really worried about it misbehaving. But proper due diligence would be to understitch. I'm going to clip that a little bit because this curves up where we had made it tip up in the center. But again, right sides together. I'm trying to decide which uh, <laughs> set of these I want to be the outside, and this one had this nice blue feather on the outside, so I want that. Not blue feather, blue flower. Oh my goodness! I need more coffee. I had a terrible time trying to fall asleep last night, which is not unusual for me, but when it becomes a two podcast night, usually I can put like a repeat of a podcast on and I'll fall asleep to it. But last night I got all the way through the episode and then I tried to sleep in the silence for a little while, but I was just laying there overthinking things. And so I put another podcast on. I think I did finally fall asleep after that. I had a headache for most of the day yesterday. It's quite rude. Come on. I don't have time for that. Although the weather is kind of changeable here, so that might be part of the problem. It's some sort of atmospheric pressure that I'm barely aware of causing havoc in my brain. Um, I'm just going ahead and basting the tops of these now that they are turned right side out. So the hem is done and this uh, raw edge of this out, the raw edge of the sleeve cap, there we go, will be covered by the bodice lining eventually. So I'm not concerned again about that frame, but I did have a line of gathering stitching in the top of my little sleeve here. Again, not because the sleeves are gathered, but just so that it helps set in my sleeve nicely. And I am going to set these sleeves into my outer layer of my garment. Um, so the sleeves are only set into the outer layer. And then the lining layer in here, I'm going to only sew to the neckline of the bodice, turn it all right side out, and then I will stitch the arm side of the lining around this area. You will see what I mean in a moment. This is, once again, this is kind of a hard dress to explain. This was not that difficult to make. Um, it was pretty simple. There's no zipper involved. There's just a couple of skirt hooks in the end. Well, you could use hooks and eyes, but I always prefer a big skirt hook. In fact, I think they're like having a run on them because I'm having a hard time finding them but I need to buy a bunch more so I can stop running out of them because I use a lot of skirt hooks, hooks in my wrapped garments. But um, here I'm setting my sleeves in to the outer, uh, outer level, outer layer of my bodice. <sighs> Why do you put up with me? <laughs> uh, if you ever gain anything from my videos, I think it's a success for both of us, honestly, because you have, had inter you have somehow interpreted my rambling and I have somehow conveyed any thought through it. I don't... All right, so I'm taking the bodice with its sleeves set in now. There we go. And I'm taking the lining with no sleeves. And I'm going to line those up right sides together all along the back of the neckline, the front wrap of it all, like so. And I'm gonna sew along this front wrap all the way around the back neckline down the other side of the wrap in order to sew these two together. And here you see me like <laughs> playing piano on the fabric like that. I'm just wiggling it until it matches up perfectly because again, crepe wants to move around. So I'm going to sew all the way around this wrap area over on the machine, half inch seam allowance, as always, sewing right over those silk pins as usual, which is how they end up kind of bent sometimes. Honestly, I'm rough enough with them that I bend them myself just with my fingers. So it doesn't really take the machine hitting them to do that. But I'll sew all of this and then I will clip my curves, of course, here's around the neckline, Oop, like so the back neckline, I guess. The front neckline is what the wrap is. But you'll notice this is still quite a higher-ish neckline uh, for a wrap, I guess. I had some people mentioning in my recent wrap video that a lot of wrap dresses tend to have low necklines, and I just think not when I make them, because we all know I uh, don't appreciate a low neckline. I, I just don't really think they're as flattering on me, and they leave me less room for brooches, so no time for that. Once again, I will clip my curves like I mentioned, like so. And then I think I do remember to do understitching on this. Thank goodness. Thanks, kid. Please. Yes, take that back over the machine and I'm going to understitch. Like so. So I'm stitching the seam allowance down to the lining side. So underneath my fingers here, the seam allowance is pushed all the way to the left underneath the lining side of my garment. I'm stitching on the lining side with the seam allowance underneath so that this can all be pressed nice and flat. And it also gives a little bit more stability to this wrap edge. I never really worry about things stretching out too much because I don't use very floopy, well not floopy, I use very floopy, flowy fabrics. 
but uh, usually I use quite tightly woven fabrics. The more loosely woven a fabric is, the more it's going to stretch out and get weird on you over the years, over washing it, things like that. So I quite like a tightly woven fabric as opposed to something loosely woven. If you think loosely, like it's easier to understand loosely woven and tightly woven in like knits, for example, because like a jersey, like a t-shirt fabric, that's a tightly knit knit, but like a loose cable scarf or something is much more loosely knit thing. There's more air, there's more space between the threads. It's the same with wovens. The more air and space between the threads there is in a woven, the more room there is for it to move around and get misshapen on you. So I like more threads per inch, as it were, which is what you usually hear it referenced um, when it comes to sheets. Like you hear like 800 thread count sheets are nicer than 300 thread count sheets. And that's just because they're silkier and have more threads per square inch. And so let me just give this a final press here, this whole entire wrap edge and neckline edge over here. I'm using my tailor's ham and with a little bit of steam, you can make it lie smooth. And then it is time to encase that raw edges along the arm side and the sleeve cap like I was talking about earlier. So my lining layer and my outer layer are sewn together along the wrap front, along the neckline but the arm side of my lining is still free in here, which means I can use it, turn it inside half inch like this, line it up at the underarm, which is where I am right here, and at the shoulder, and all along here, I'm gonna clip that arm side seam allowance just cause it's a bit curved, and just to be able to facilitate doing this as best I can. But again, here, this is the underarm, pin that in place. I've got it pinned up at the shoulder, but I'll just fold my lining in a half inch, like the seam allowance would be, I suppose, and I will slip stitch it around my sleeve here. Um, so I'm layering that up around, I guess folding the lining a half inch under at the arm side and lining that folded edge up with the seam line from where I set the sleeves into the outer bodice and just pinning that along so that it fits. And then I can slip stitch this area and it'll be entirely seamless on the inside here. And none of my raw seam edges for this area will be showing. Everything will be encased within the lining and nice and finished, I suppose. We all know I don't line most of my garments, honestly, because when I'm working with cotton sateen and things like that, I don't bother. But when working with rayon or silk, I like to line things when possible. So I was glad I had enough of this fabric to line it with itself because that is even better. I also like something like this. Oh, here I am slip stitching it by the way. I'm using actually a beading needle, or as we call them here on the channel, a beetle to uh, go ahead and stitch this because while a lot of people like short needles, <clears throat> I love long needles. So I like long, thin, bendy needles, which is what beading needles are. So I'm just using that with some doubled thread to go ahead and slip stitch that down. That whole area is just pinning. But uh, I like when I have a black and white floral like this, that the white sections are a little bit more transparent than the black. So if I do line it with itself, it gives it a kind of like, I don't know, layered effect because you can sort of see the shadowy pattern underneath the white of the lining. Hopefully that makes any sense. But here I am just folding and pressing a hem into the curved edges of the top drape of the tiered skirt here. We have to start working on the skirt again here, now that the bodice is all together. But yes, I'm just turning that quarter inch and a quarter inch again. I'll do the same for the next tier down, the other tiered layer of the skirt here. This is the outermost edge of that. That is that straight line that will hang free in the sort of waterfall-ish area. But I'm just going to hand stitch all of this, hand hem this as well. And once that's done, I can start layering things up. So what I have here is those two tiered extra floopy layers and I'm laying on top right now the back of the skirt. So this is the right hand side seam of my skirt for the back and then the two extra front layers, but not the full front layer. The full front layer will only be sewn to the other side of the back. This is kind of a weird way of doing a wrap skirt. I have a little sketch so you can kind of understand what I'm doing uh, later on so you can get an idea, but this I'm just layering the two like decorative layers of the front to the structural layer of the back at the right hand side seam. And I am going to encase all of that once it's sewn into some hug snug washable rayon seam binding here. I like to fold that in half and press it to create a very long taco as it were to go ahead and sandwich these raw edges in. Uh, you can do this individual layers. I'm just doing all three of these particular layers at once. But yes, I have the layers sandwiched in between that fold, that taco of round seam binding. And I'm stitching that down using my presser foot as a guide again, just to encase those raw edges so nothing will fray and everything, everything will be nice and finished. Since the rest of the inside of this dress, there will be no raw edges on the inside of this dress anywhere. So to keep that going, we're going with round seam binding down here. 
I figure I have a little bit of extra time to use round seam binding because I'm not doing a zipper. Anyhow, here's my sketch. So you can see how this is going to wrap. So I'm sewing this. That's what I just sewed right now. The two layers to the back and then the other front will be sewn to the back as well. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm sewing the full front to the other side of the back. So this is the left hand side seam. I'm sewing the full front all only and then to the back side seam. And uh, I know this doesn't make much sense. <laughs> So let's just let future future me explain how all this goes together and how I'm going to finish up this dress. So here is a drawing of our dress, how it will finish out. So we have a left and a right front and a back. Those are all sewn together at the sides. And then that is sewn to the skirts. The skirts, we have our front drapes and we have our solid front. Both are sewn to the back, one side each. And then over here, I ended up adding a facing and that's where one hook and then one eye will go here on the other opposite side seam. And that will be like this. And then they have a hook here and another hook here to hook the over layers on like this. And that's how the dress functions. But of course this part would still be open, but we don't have to leave that open because we can take the dress, flip it and sew from the facing down to the hem so that this part is then closed turn it right side out. So this would be, you know, closed like so, so that this is now closed together. You step into the dress with plenty of room up here and this would just close and you would hook this and hook this and you can wear your dress and this will be finished. So it's kind of a wrap dress, but it doesn't fully open anymore because this edge will be sewn down here but only from like halfway down, you know? And then nothing will ever fly open also, which is kind of nice. Yes, indeed, this one is very hard to explain. So here's future future me taking over for past me, talking to you in the future. Uh, once again, also time doesn't make much sense, but that's all right. Here I am sewing the full front to the back of this dress. Um, it's a bit of a weird wrap dress, but it is really actually uh, easier than it seems, honestly, once you understand what's happening, it's a lot easier than it seems. So I've randomly pleated down the sort of waterfall extension area of the middle tier to match the length at the waist of the top tier of this skirt. And that means that the skirt is now like finished, which means that I can now attach the skirt at the waist to the bodice at the waist. That is what I will do next, matching up side seams first and then anything else that will correlate and match up at the waist. I am going to stitch this to just the outside, the fashion fabric, quote unquote, layer of the bodice, and I will leave the lining of the bodice free. It's attached to the neckline, of course, but I'm going to use that lining later to hide all this seam allowance here at the waist, just like I did with the arm size earlier with the lining. I'll show you in a moment what I mean by that. But I can go ahead and sew the waist of the outer layer of the bodice to the top waist of the skirt pieces, right sides together. <sighs> Dang it. Once again, I have this, uh, to me, it's actually quite an easy project, but when I go to try and explain it, it suddenly seems complex. I promise this is actually a lot easier than I'm making it sound. Unfortunately, I'll just stitch that on half inch seam allowance, of course, as usual. Again, I just randomly pleated that me uh, middle layer of the tier down to match the top tier. It's a little bit wider at the waist, which you saw during pattern drafting. But here I'm turning the inside. I've pressed all that seam allowance at the waist up into the bodice, and I'm turning the lining layer of the bodice under inside a half inch, just like I did when I was doing the arm size. I'm gonna pin this all along the waist here and I will hand stitch all of this down, just like I did again with the arm size. So same exact technique here, just using it to finish the inside of the waist seam. And possibly I will go ahead and remake this dress again in a different fabric in the future. Um, I do have a rayon in my stash that I would like to make this dress out of, um, just so that I can have another crack at this. Perhaps when I'm in a less of a PMDD fog, I will do better at explaining this. Um, but today, obviously I'm not doing the best job, but here's that facing I mentioned earlier. This is just a three inch wide strip of my fabric that was cut using my skirt pattern. So it has that little bit of a curve up here at the hip, but just three inch wide facing. I've surged the outer edges of that. I'm just using this to finish this end of the skirt that comes past where the bodice does because the skirt is a full front in the front. That's where I'm putting the spacing on the edge of the full front where it will attach to nothing on the inside, but the bodice is not fully to the side seam. So I had this little bit of an extension here that I just needed to finish. And I'm just doing that with a facing here. So that again, all raw edges are contained. This facing is maybe about a foot long. 
maybe 12 inches or so, a little bit over. I did not measure it. I just eyeballed it, which is again, not helpful for explaining things. You know, this actually looks maybe 13 inches long, a foot and a, and a pinch, you know, like so. And this is all can be sewn down up here. And then we have this last free edge to talk about. That's the free edge I'm going to attach to the other side of the back of the skirt, like I was talking about in that uh, drawing. So this edge here from the facing down, the skirt gets closed entirely. So from the facing up, this dress will be open and will just be closed with hook and eyes. But down here at the bottom of the skirt, this will be fully closed. So again, this is a wrap dress that cannot flap open unless your hooks come completely undone, which is why I don't recommend using actual hooks and hook and eyes. I really like using skirt hooks, which are a bit heftier and meatier, and you can tighten them up with a pair of pliers even so that they really hook quite well. Um, that's what I prefer. You can also put ties on something like this if you wanted to tie those shut, double bow them, you know, or even use something like frog closures or some sort of a buckles and clasps, whatever you wanted to do to actually close these things up. I just prefer skirt, skirt hooks. But after I sew that bottom portion of the side seam between the skirt front and the back, all that I have left to do at this point, because I've already hand sewn my lining down inside as well, is to hem this dress. So I'm going to turn it half inch twice and just go ahead and hand stitch this hem as well. I'm sorry this one was so confusing today. Thank you for bearing with me on this one. Perhaps I'll make another dress like this in the future. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see. And here is my finished Montgomery Ward's 1948 replica dress. I'm quite happy with how this dress came out. I can really see myself wearing this in the future for summertime and styled in different ways with the black and the white and the different colors that are available to me in this print. I hope you enjoyed seeing this 1940s reproduction project today. I know I'll be doing some more 40s projects coming up here soon. So for the 40s lovers out there, I've got it covered. And thank you as always for watching. I will be back here with more vintage fashion sewing, costuming and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.